When you look up at the night sky, whether with your own eyes or through images, the view is always the same. A vast darkness speckled with tiny lights, stars, planets, or even satellites. And then a curious question arises. Why is space dark? Why don't we see the sky lit up in color, like the blue that covers Earth during the day? And if the sun is shining out there, why doesn't it light up the surrounding space? This question is more common than it seems, and the answer might surprise you. Contrary to what many people believe, it's not the absence of light that makes space dark. In fact, there are billions of stars scattered across our galaxy, and billions of galaxies in the universe, each with its own suns and planets reflecting light. With so many light sources, you'd expect the sky to be incredibly bright all the time, but that's not what happens. During the day, the sky on Earth is bright because the sun lights up the side of the planet we're on. At night, as the Earth rotates, we're turned away from the sun, and everything goes dark. While this explanation makes sense at first, it's only part of the story. There's something much deeper going on. Just look at the moon, and you'll notice something interesting. Even when sunlight is shining directly on it, the sky around it remains completely black. That's because, unlike Earth, the moon has no atmosphere. And that's exactly where the secret lies. The atmosphere is a layer of gases that surrounds a celestial body, held in place by gravity. Here on Earth, it's made up of a mix of gases, water droplets, and dust particles that act like tiny mirrors. These elements interact with sunlight and scatter it in all directions. This scattering of light, known as dispersion, is what makes the sky appear blue. Molecules like oxygen and nitrogen are especially good at scattering the shorter wavelengths of light, such as blue and violet. But the human eye is more sensitive to blue, which is why that's the color we see. This interaction between light and atmosphere is what transforms a sunny day into a brilliant blue spectacle. Even on Mars, which has an atmosphere about 100 times thinner than Earth's, there are still enough molecules to give the sky a grayish-blue tint. In other words, even a thin layer of gases can completely change the way we perceive the sky. Now imagine the opposite. Space. An almost perfect vacuum. There are no molecules, no dust, no water droplets. Nothing at all to reflect or scatter light. When sunlight travels through space, it moves in a straight line until it hits something. If there's nothing in its path, it just keeps going. And if nothing reaches your eyes, what you see is emptiness, a deep black. This phenomenon explains why, even though the sun shines intensely in space, it doesn't light up everything around it. Light needs something to interact with, and since space is empty, there are no surfaces to reflect or scatter that light toward our eyes. As a result, without that redirected light, space appears completely dark to us. Now, you might be thinking, but what about all the other stars? After all, the universe is full of them. If there are countless suns scattered across the cosmos, why doesn't the night sky shine like a concert stage, with lights coming from every direction? That question has been around for a long time, and it's not easy to answer. Back in the 10th century, the Persian astronomer Al-Sufi was already speculating about the infinite number of stars. Centuries later, the question gained more attention through what's known as Olber's Paradox, named after the 19th century German astronomer Heinrich Wilhelm Olbers. He wondered why the night sky is dark if the universe is infinite and filled with stars. At the time, his explanation was that a kind of cosmic dust was blocking the light from distant stars, preventing it from reaching us. The idea was interesting, but it soon proved to be incorrect. That's because even if dust blocked visible light, it would eventually absorb that energy and heat up, and as a result, it would start to emit radiation itself. Over time, this dust would end up illuminating the sky anyway, yet the night sky remained dark. With advances in science, we now understand there are several reasons why the sky is dark, despite the overwhelming number of stars. First, many of those stars are so unimaginably far away that their light simply hasn't had enough time to reach us. Light, though incredibly fast, is not instantaneous. Some stars are so distant that the light they emitted billions of years ago is still traveling through space. Moreover, Stars don't last forever. Some disappeared long ago, and what we see is only the light they emitted in the past, still making its way across the universe toward us. On the other hand, there are also young stars whose light beams are still traveling toward Earth and won't be visible to us for millions or even billions of years. It's like looking at a photograph from a distant past. Another key factor is the brightness of those stars. Even the ones relatively close to us, like Alpha Centauri or Sirius, don't emit enough light to noticeably brighten the night sky. The amount of light that reaches us is extremely small, just enough to appear as a bright dot, but far from enough to light up the space around us. To make things even more complicated, 
our eyes can only detect a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, what we call visible light. But light actually comes in many forms and wavelengths, such as radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. All of these types of light exist in space, but we can't see them without the help of specific instruments. Stars, for example, don't emit only visible light. They also release enormous amounts of radiation in other parts of the spectrum, like infrared and ultraviolet. And that's where modern telescopes come in. Instruments like the James Webb or the Hubble are designed to capture these invisible forms of light. Thanks to them, we can see the universe in a level of detail that would never be possible with human vision alone. If we could see microwaves, for example, the night sky would glow constantly. That's because the entire universe is filled with a type of radiation called the cosmic microwave background. This is one of the greatest discoveries in modern cosmology and acts like a leftover glow from the Big Bang, the explosion that gave birth to the universe about 13.8 billion years ago. This radiation is everywhere, like an echo of the universe's origin. Even after billions of years, it still fills all of space. But since we can't see microwaves with the naked eye, that glow goes unnoticed. To us, space remains dark. It's fascinating to think about this because the darkness we see doesn't mean there's no light. On the contrary, the universe is filled with radiation, energy, and particles. But most of the time, our eyes just aren't equipped to detect it all. It's as if we were watching a massive show while blindfolded. We can only catch a tiny fraction of what's really going on. Now imagine if we had special glasses that could expand our range of vision. If we could see infrared light, we'd observe the heat of newborn stars. If we could see ultraviolet, the sky would look like a glowing painting full of energetic light. And if microwaves were visible, space itself would seem to shine constantly, as if it had remained lit since the beginning of time. It would be like stepping into a new visual dimension where every corner of the universe revealed a hidden secret. That's the beauty of science. It shows us that what seems simple, like the dark sky above our heads, actually hides deep, fascinating explanations full of mysteries. The darkness of space isn't total emptiness. It's an apparent void, where much more is happening than we can imagine. Thinking about how the universe is full of light, and yet space still looks dark, is one of those ideas that make us reflect on the limits of our perception. The darkness we see is really a reminder of how limited our senses are when facing the vastness of the cosmos. And at the same time, it shows how far we've come. Thanks to science and technology, we're now able to see beyond the darkness, explore invisible frequencies, and uncover details that seemed unreachable for centuries. What's invisible today might become part of our daily lives tomorrow. Maybe someday, with technological progress, we'll develop lenses or devices that expand our vision, allowing us to see the universe in all its complexity. Imagine looking up and seeing the glow of the cosmic background, or watching galaxies in infrared, as if we were flipping through the pages of a book written in invisible light. Until then, we continue gazing at a sky that looks dark, but is full of stories. Every bright dot you see up there is a star that's millions or billions of years old, a source of light that traveled unimaginable distances just to reach your eyes. And even what we can't see, like the radiation from the Big Bang or the light from distant stars that hasn't reached us yet, is still out there, as if the universe itself is whispering secrets we're not quite ready to hear. So next time you look up at the night sky and see that black canvas dotted with stars, remember, what seems empty is actually full, full of energy, of light, of time, and of possibilities. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new today, don't forget to leave a like. That really helps this content reach more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time. It's free, takes less than two seconds, and you'll get more videos like this filled with amazing facts about the universe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on our next journey through space.